The Reality of the Gospel World Outreach Ministries presents the Voice of Deliverance broadcast, featuring the explosive preaching, bold teaching, and the powerful prayer of deliverance of Heaven's Ambassador, Leonard Ford. Brother Ford is a minister that does what others don't, and he has a ministry that goes where others won't. He and his wife, Jesse travel across America and around the world, preaching hope and bringing deliverance. Whether they are in the church, under the gospel tent, or on the mission field, they boldly declare that if you continue in the word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now I present to you, Brother Ford. Listen, this is Prophet Ford. I want to invite you to a camp meeting like no other. Go ahead and mark the dates, August the 3rd through the 7th. That's right, 2020, this year, August 3rd through the 7th, 10.30 a.m., 7 p.m., right here at 9101 Lou Drive. It's going to be a camp meeting like no other. This is the first time that I've invited each speaker to do both services. That's right. Each speaker is going to speak the morning and the night, and we'll believe in God to show up and show himself strong on our behalf. We're bringing in Apostle Brenda Jefferson. She's going to kick us off Monday the 3rd at 1030 that morning and then 7 that night. And then on Tuesday night, we're going to have Apostle Marcus Stevenson Jr. He's going to be here both services. And then uh, the power of God is going to accompany uh, one of my spiritual sons from is coming from Texas, Brother Chris McRae, powerful young man, and right at his mid-40s, amen. I'm telling you, strong. But he, the church that he's pastoring, he's been in that church since he was 19 years old, and he's progressed all the way up through the ranks, and now they've turned it over to him, and he's become the senior pastor. Very seasoned, anointed young man. And then on Thursday, I'm going to have Prophet Willie Edwards from the International House of Praise to come and do both services. And as always, I'll be the anchor man on Friday, amen, that morning and that night. So make plans now. Call a neighbor, call a friend, do whatever you got to do, adjust your schedule. But I'm telling you, this will be a camp meeting like no other. Normally, we I don't carry a theme. I have a theme in my heart, but I don't really put it out there because I want the speakers to be able to flow. But this year, our theme is going to be this gospel of the kingdom must be preached. We're in that time. The gospel of the kingdom has got to be preached. You don't want to miss a service. You don't want to miss a moment. Get here early enough to get in the opening prayer. And the presence and the power of God is going to make a difference in this camp meeting. Remember, August 3rd through the 7th, 9101 Lou Drive, Little Rock, Arkansas, 1030 a.m., 7 p.m. A camp meeting like no other. This gospel of the kingdom must be preached. Clothed in my vocabulary. It reveals the will of God to me. Faith begins where the will of God is known. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. I will hear the word of God today. Faith will come into my heart. I will believe and receive the good things that God has for me. Because this is the word of God. I am who it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I cannot be defeated. And I will not quit. I'm unbeatable. Invincible. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. Therefore I know. When I have the word of God on my situation, I have God on my situation. Therefore, my situation must change in Jesus' name. But I want to talk about today when the musicians and the singers are on one accord. One accord talks about having one mind, one sentiment of heart. It talks about flowing, amen, uh, with, 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 with one purpose, one endeavor. Pastor Hayes uh, talked about different attitudes, but when everybody's attitude is the same, everybody's motivation of heart is the same. I came to rehearse or to rehearse. I came to praise to praise. 
And so uh, let's get started. Before before we even uh, get started, let's let's let, let's start with this fact because I want before we go any further, I want to settle something, and I want to settle the fact that God created both music and singing. I want, I want to settle the fact that both music and singing were ordained to praise and worship God. If, if nobody had ever fallen, there would be music and there would be singing. In Job chapter 38, verse 7, and I want you to turn to Ezekiel, but Job 38 and 7 says, when the morning stars sang. See, we had stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. So we see singing brings a response. Now, you know, I know some of y'all grew up in the era and you heard the blues singing the depression. We ain't talking about that. And country music and, and, and you know, hee-haw. We ain't, no, no, that, that's perverted. That wasn't supposed to be there. That's a perversion. Ezekiel 38, because I'm establishing the fact that, uh, yeah, about it. Okay. I'm establishing the fact that God created music. Ezekiel 38. Ezekiel 28. Did I say 38? Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28. We're just going to deal with one verse. Verse 13. He's speaking the law of double reference. He talked to the king, but he's talking to the spirit behind him. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Now we do know, since Adam, no man has been in Eden, right? So he, he cannot be talking to this physical king. If you go, because I know some of y'all understand you read context. If you want to read the context, it, it, it's impossible to be saying this statement to this king. He's talking to this principality that's operating here behind him. And he said, thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God, every precious stone was thy covering. Now, the, 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 uh, the priest wore an ephod. Amen. But that was a garment that he put on. It wasn't his covering. So he's talking to an angelic being. He's talking to a, a being by the name of Lucifer that used to be, hallelujah, you can put it right here, that used to be an anointed cherub. Yeah. Stop trying to give orders. <laughs> Thou has been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was what? That cover. Let me pop right there. As you read them stones, understand this. Real music is light. Yeah. When music is really soft, when you, when you can get into that arena and see music, it's, it's light shafts. It's just going. When you are singing under that anointing, there are rays of light that are going everywhere. I think about Phil Driscoll, the great trumpet player. His mama was pregnant with him, and she was walking through a, a church with stained glass windows, and she said all of a sudden she heard the voice of God, and she saw these rays of light, and she was so sure that it was the sun coming through the stained glass window because it was hitting her belly where, she, where the baby was, right? But when God spoke to her, he said, no, that, that's not coming into you. That's going out of you. That's that music that's in that baby that's in your womb. And nobody blows a trumpet like Phil Driscoll. And I found this out, uh, you know, I've been saying it for years, but a few years ago up at Brother Copeland's uh, ministerial conference, Phil Driscoll was there and he had left his trumpet at home. And Brother Kenneth said, my trumpet is in the study. He said, well, I can play your trumpet. And when Brother Phil Driscoll played Brother Kenneth Copeland's trumpet, Kenneth Copeland said, that trumpet ain't never sound like that. What am I telling you is not the instrument, it's the musician. The music ain't in the piano. If it was, I can make it come out. No, no, no. The music is in the musician. But I came to tell you, God created it. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. The jazz, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, the gold. Well, here, here's what I'm after. The workmanship of thy tablets. When you get tablets, you get tamarind, you get your drums. Come on here, you're getting your percussion. And that pipe. Remember you used to go in those old churches and you would see pipe organs. Amen. They would say. And so they were prepared in thee in the day that thou was what? created. God created. Okay, let's go to Colossians chapter 1. God created music. God created musicians. Satan creates nothing. He's a perverter. Amen. And he, he begins to take things and twist it because he knows the purpose for which God put it on the planet. But there's something about it. When people get there first, come on, when perverted things happen first, all of a sudden it don't belong in the church. You would be amazed at how many churches think dancing don't belong in the church. Why? Because they were introduced to dancing in the club. 
not realizing that there was a renegade, bachelor and cherub, that thought he could mess with the minds of people by putting it in the wrong place and making us think it don't belong where it really came from. Down in Colossians 1, verse 16. For by him, talking about Jesus, were all things created that are in heaven and that are where? Sound like music to me. Visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by who? And why? For him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. The book of First uh, St. John, the first chapter, we call it the Gospel of John. John 1, the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, the same within the beginning with God. Watch verse 3 here now. All things were made by who? And without was not anything that was made. So I rest that part of my case. Music was created by God. Now I want to talk to you about a little something. Early in scripture, we discovered something about music and singing going together. But run to Genesis right quick. I'm trying to show you at the same time how quick Satan went to work to pervert music. Think about it. We read nowhere where Adam or woman ever sang a song before they fell. We read now, we know God came down and communed with them in the cool of the the day. We know that Adam had access to heaven and God had access to earth. Their fellowship brought God to earth and took Adam to heaven. As a matter of fact, the day that God created Adam, he created him inside of himself. And for the sixth day and the seventh day, as Adam was in God, he was being married, you know, marinated in God, sitting there sauteed with the glory of God. And then on the eighth day, we say the eighth day, but the Bible never ends the seventh day. The Bible says day one, two, three, four, five, six. On the seventh day he rested and the next thing we hear is God from a man's body and breathe. Don't say, don't say the eighth day. Anyway, that's, that's another story. Genesis chapter four, are you there? I've been waiting for you to get over there. Genesis chapter four. I want to look at verse 21. This is after the fall of man and his brother's name was Jubal. Jubal is the father, the primogenitor, the progenitor of all of such as handle what? Musical instruments, the harp and the organ. You know how it is. If a preacher say, ain't the Lord all around, he's jubilistic. He wasn't them jubilistic preacher. Come on here. We, we, call, what? we, we understand jubilistic. Jubal, the creator of instruments, amen, he brought in something that wasn't. So the devil had been in heaven. He knew what it was like when he would begin to walk and the wind would blow the pipes in him. And now, when you it, it get a little deep when you look up that, that passage in there, in uh, Ezekiel, where it talks about. About the pipes were in you. When you start looking at that in the Hebrew, it takes you to a place where it talks about feminine voices, amen, singing. So what I'm telling you, in the music, amen, the sopranos, come on here, the altos, you got to understand the first and second soprano, they was all there, so the devil decided, I got to mess this up for earth find out what it really belongs to. I got to mess up the procrist. You know, most folks heard about drums. It was folks, you know, guitar folks like, like Jimi Hendrix it wasn't come on here, it wasn't nobody in church well, so they, they, they grew up trying to emulate that but not knowing there's a spirit behind that beat there's a spirit behind those lyrics and that's what the devil wanted to do so when you begin to play now don't bring that devil music in the church the devil don't own nothing so he, he's the father of all those. Now, Genesis 31, 27. This is when, 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 when uh, this boy had been mistreated and God gave him divine wisdom and he got his breakthrough and he left town and then they caught up with him and he wrote, I'm going to read it out the NIV just so you can catch it. And the verse 27 of Genesis 31, he said, why did you run off secretly and deceive me? He wanted to talk. You done changed the man's wages 10 times in 20 years and how about you been deceived? He said, watch this, watch this, watch this. Why didn't you tell me you was leaving? Because you wouldn't let me go. I could, here's what, here's what I brought you here for. I could send you away with joy and singing. The reason I want to read out the NIV because it says, 
to the music, singing to the music. Remember what I'm talking about now? When the musician and the singers are on one accord. Amen. You don't just sing and he play. No, you sing into the music. Come on, he's playing to the singing. And that's the whole deal. And I bring you know, Pastor Hayes talked about, amen, one side but sometimes you got folks playing one song and somebody singing another. Oh, then you got them folk like before. Amen. He sing the right song. He just added on verses and lyrics and words to it. And you're like, well, uh, that, that ain't how the story go. That just, come on here. You have to be very anointed to play for me. That's why I don't tax your talent. I just let somebody else do the singing. Okay, okay. The scripture also reveals to us that music and the prophetic are closely, I did not say pathetic, I said prophetic, okay? Music and the prophetic are closely connected. Now you gotta catch this, cause a lot of folk don't understand how vital music is to the prophetic. And I'm not just talking about the prophet now, I'm talking about the prophetic flow as you come in a service. Amen. And when you don't understand that, I want you, I know you rehearsed, but I'm trying to tell you the wrong song can throw everything. It can derail everything. Come on here. You got to understand that can be an atmosphere in the service and you look over there at old puppy eyes and just cause we did rehearse her song and the way she looking, she don't want us to cut it off. We got to sing her song. When we sing her song, nobody getting saved, nobody getting healed, nobody going to get a word. The preacher going to struggle. Why? Because God had the atmosphere set and conducive for the flow of the spirit and you just had old puppy eyes for your idol and because you honored your idol puppy eyes, God said, oh, the glory don't go to me today. I'm out of here. No, no, okay, go to first time you're 10. Go to first time you're 10. See, you got to understand, in, 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 the, in the book of Second Chronicles, when Jehoshaphat was facing an enemy, amen, the Bible don't say nowhere that God told him. It said he met, after he got a word from God, what it was going to be, he met, he had a consultation with the people. He sent the singers out before him, and as the singers began to sing, something happened in the atmosphere, and the Holy Ghost began to move, and by the time they didn't even get to see God move, when they got there, God was done. And then he probably, you know, David was playing Saul with demon, amen, a, a spirit of, a, a demon of powers was resting up on him. This spirit wasn't in him. It would come and it would go. Or when David would just play under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. See, instrumentals, amen, it, you know, we talk about Beethoven and all them. But I'm trying to tell you in the house of God, there should be a time when an anointed vessel can sit at whatever instrument that they play. And as they play, the atmosphere shifts. Why? Because demons leave. Oppression gets up out of there. Depression has got to go under the anointing of a not just, it's more than just skill. We need to study. We need to play skillful. But with the skill, there's an anointing that's necessary. And when the anointing, that's why we call it supernatural, when the anointing gets up on you, but see, a lot of musicians are afraid to yield to the anointing. When the anointing comes, uh, that, ain't, that wasn't in the textbook. I, I don't know. No, yield. He knows how to play. See, that's like preaching. Sometimes you get to preaching, God will give you an utterance, and when he make you sound like you so wild, like you done been to Bible school, and you be like, I want that CD myself. I ain't never heard me say none of that. So same way with music. God can anoint you, or you can't tell me that he can't, because I've been anointed to sing under the power of God and change the lives of people, because I'm trying to tell you, now if a person who don't sing can be anointed to sing and make a difference, how much more should those that are anointed to sing, that are called to sing, that can sing, and it went to the Juilliard School of Music. Come on here. Know how to sing. Yield to the anointing. And under the anointing, that's why Dr. Watts says, although I move so slow, I wait until the spirit comes and move at God's command. I came to tell you here when the music and the musician, amen, is packed into the spirit of God and the singer and the song is flowing with God. See, every song don't fit every service. What's wrong with us? We like to replay. Who last Sunday? I sung this here. So this Sunday, pastor said, I want her to come sing that song. It ain't going to happen this week. Last week, the Holy Ghost called for it. This week, you calling for it. And see, that's why we get them attitudes like, she didn't know she could sing that song better than that. She just got up there and just, ooh, just made a mess. You blaming the wrong person. She didn't ask to sing that song this week. You did. Y'all in 1 Samuel 10? 
Verse 5. I'm talking about now the, the coalition with music and the prophetic flow. After that, thou shalt come to the hill of God where he is a garrison. We're in verse 5, 1 Samuel 10, 5. Of the Philistines, and it shall come to pass when thou art come thither to the city that thou shalt meet a company of what? Prophets coming down from where? Just in case you don't take the time to read your Bible, high place is a place of worship. They're coming out of worship. See, that's what's wrong. We got too many prophets coming to the pulpit out of Dennis. Come on here. Too many prophets coming to the pulpit out of the IHOP. Come on here. But it's time to come out of worship. You need to spend some time alone with God alone. And I came to tell you if the prophet of God got to get in the face of God, so shall the minstrel, so shall the summons, so shall the praise conductor. Come on, show yourself the worship leader. That's what's wrong with us. We come to church. All oh, and on the way to church with honey. You and your boo about to have a one-two punch. Then you walk up in there and grab a microphone, tell my lips, engage God. You can't engage nothing but repentance. And that's what's wrong with the church now. We in a time now where we don't take this thing serious. This is a real deal. This is about the king and his kingdom. We gotta make a decision here. I didn't just come to perform. I didn't just come to impress you and throw my voice like a baseball. I came in here. To lift up the name of Jesus. Our Jesus, if I be lifted up, I'll draw men unto me. And I came to tell you in our churches, we're wondering where are the gifts of the Spirit? The prophetic flow is held up because we won't get the flow of the music and the preaching right. When thou art come to the city, go meet a company, not just one. Coming out of the high places, watch this, with musical instruments, the psaltery, the tabber, the pipe, the harp. What is it? Before them, before them, praise and worship is always before the prophet, is it not? Praise and worship is always before the teacher. What am I saying? Praise and worship sets the tone for the prophetic flow. When we come out and we just do our performance, you know, because there's too many church folk trying to act like hip-hop folk. Too many church folk want to come up in here and act like street rap folks. Uh, if you're going to rap, I ain't, see, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm like this right here. If you're going to rap, you got to be more than cool and dap and know how to rap. Come on, you got to be more than rap brown, the coolest man in town. You can't be the beast from the east, the best from the west, the dead slid, the judge slid, the women's pet, and the men's friend. And then you just put it on the front. See, they ain't no you got. I'm talking about somebody that's going to get in the face of God and let God drop something in your spirit. And when you open your mouth, we're not just talking about rhyme and rhythm. We're talking about the flow of the anointed. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. When you get in the presence of God, hallelujah, God brings deliverance. If you will pray and seek the face of God, and pray in the Holy Ghost when you pick up drumsticks the anointing to play will come on you and the Holy Ghost will play the drums watch verse 6 he said they are gonna prophesy remember the praises the singers the worship the instruments is going before them see when they get on one accord it triggers that's why sometimes I, I go to churches and where musicians are used to playing and that's all they do is play. You can't even talk to your neighbor. They're so loud. And then you get ready to preach and they want to play. They're supposed to be following you and they leading you way out here. they pushing you. And then you tell them, hold that. Then when you need it, they're gone. Where you at? You got a man left. Got, what? He, he left. He said you didn't need him. I didn't need him messing up the flow of God. Verse 6 is what I brought you here for. When the atmosphere is right and the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee and thou shalt prophesy with them. Watch this. And thou shall be turned into another man. He wasn't another man because he prophesied. He was another man because an anointing came on him. I came to tell you when you get in the right atmosphere, I've been preaching under the power of God and then even call an altar call and folk run to the altar and cry out, what must I do to be saved? I came to tell you I was preaching a youth revival and all of a sudden the power of God hit. Y'all seen when, when it hit when Leroy Thompson preached and money come up, rush the altar. Well, I was preaching that night, hallelujah, and all of a sudden the power of God 
fell and people started running to the altar and when I bagged up it was 50 people on the altar and the altar was filled with snuff tobacco, come on, cigarettes cigars and other paraphernalia, what happened the Holy Ghost began to move mothers went in their purse and pulled out their old ugly spit can and brought it to the altar, what am I trying to tell you, I didn't call for no snuff I didn't call for no day's work no skull, no bullet of the woods the Holy Ghost was saying, it's time to clean, what happened, these are all born again folk, they were not street folks they was members of the church hallelujah, but the deacon said, I'm like, what in the world going on, all them folk already saved and they started just throwing all their trash on the altar, while the Holy Ghost was moving, you know what happened, that youth revival, when 14 days and I got 200 saved in 14 days, you can't pay a preacher to do that. That's nothing but the Holy Ghost, the power of God, the glory of God. But you know what? It came in an atmosphere of worship. People came worshiping. That you got to understand, when we get the singers and the musicians on one accord, we got one mind. We got one purpose. I'm all in. I'm focused. I'm tired of folk coming. You, you, you in rehearsal, but you sit at the mall. You in rehearsal, but you already had dinner. You in rehearsal, but you already done went. You, you, physically you here but you packing for vacation tomorrow you can't pack from here baby 2nd Kings 3 2nd Kings 3 music and the prophetic are closely connected and see people that don't understand that I've been in churches and I get ready to preach and they had nine babies sing y'all think I'm just making this stuff up I wish this fool was out here. She'll tell you. Uh, well, no, because I don't want to call nobody names. CD might be on, might be on TV next week. <laughs> I was in a particular city in Arkansas. Let me say it like this. And they had so much trash before me. I'm talking about trashy singing. That I decided, now I'm going to stay in the back. But I decided I'm going to stay in the back till I don't hear another song. I stayed back there so long. I figured, well, maybe they're trying to sing until I come out. So let me go out. And I met the pastor at the door. He was mad as a hornet. He looked at me and like, you back here, you, you trying to flow show. And I'm sitting there thinking, man, I got to preach. You need to hush. You, you, you don't want to come. You trying to grandstand. And so I went on out and I preached. And when I got through preaching, he made the mistake of coming into the back with me alone. Just me and him. And I, yes, I did. I told him, I said, man, let me tell you something. I said, I, I started pouring out folks in. See, the prophetic gifting will show you things that nobody tells you. So I started telling him about his key members. And I even told him what kind of business that they own. And I told him how depressed they were and why that they don't give and they don't support your church no more. I said, I've been encouraged through the uncompromising message that you heard today. If you would like to have this message in its entirety, send eight dollars for compact disc or twenty dollars for video to the reality of the gospel ministries incorporated p.o box 1640 91 little rock arkansas 72216 if you would like to become a partner with this ministry you may do so by joining the ally 200 club at 25 dollars a month or you may become a truth ally for ten dollars or more each month send your offerings to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 164091, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you continue in God's word, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free.